Becker, Episode 4, Hotels Are My Life. A couple of months ago, they sent out the official photographer from Toronto. I was assigned to show him around, to find the pictures that were going to sell the Queen of the Rockies back east. One of the last photographs he took captured the entire staff on the front steps of the hotel. Pretty impressive. Of course, now it's hanging in an alcove where nobody's likely to see it. But every once in a while, when I need to believe I'm really part of something, I pass by and take another look. That's me, Becker, the tiny patch in the back row. I'm the house detective, and this, this is my home. No, no, Becker, I'm not suggesting that you should spy on your fellow employees. However, should you hear anything, by the way... I'll report it. That's all I'm asking. If it represents a threat to the hotel, or the workers, or the guests. But it is not always up to us to judge what it represents, Becker. Now, the president of... Mr. Hickey! What? Hasn't anyone ever taught you to knock? How do you ever expect to manage your own hotel if you can't learn the simple... One knocks and waits for an invitation before one enters a superior's office. Excuse me, I didn't realize... Well, there's nothing to realize, Mr. Lewis. It is a simple courtesy, and as assistant manager, I... Excuse me? Were you going to announce me, Mr. Lewis? Oh, Mrs. Armstrong! Mrs. Armstrong, I'll please. take care of the lady, Mr. Lewis. Yes, sir. Oh, would you like me to step oh, outside? Oh, not on my account. I've only come to retrieve my necklace. Your necklace? Yes. Yes, right here in the safe, I think. And that's where you put it. Mm, yeah, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you're, you're planning to grace us with your presence at the tea dance, then. You should be a detective, Mr. Hickey. Oh, I, I doubt that Becker would agree with you. Becker? <laughs> Mr. Becker is our house detective. Ah. Ma'am. Yes, now, the necklace. Uh, if you'll stand back, Becker. Absolutely crucial we keep the combination secret, of course. Mm -hmm. Goodness. I'll have to be careful around you, Mr. Becker. And... Here we are. Thank you. Now, Becker, if you'll escort Mrs. Uh, Armstrong to the front desk, Lewis can complete the paperwork. Uh, don't you think you should check the box first? Oh, that hardly seems necessary. Oh, no, no, he's absolutely correct. Rules should be observed, uh, Mrs. Armstrong. Of course. I, I must say, I'm looking forward to... They're gone! Huh? They're gone! Oh, my God! Oh, oh, oh she, she's fainted. Oh, um... She's out for the count. Come out here, Sergeant. Clear the cobwebs out of your head. <sighs> Hotel air can get very stuffy. You're dodging me, Becker. What do you mean? I asked if Hickey was behaving suspiciously. You really suspect Hickey, Neil? Well, I don't have much choice. He admits he put the necklace in the safe, and he appears to be the only one who could have removed it. Why on earth is he the only one with the combination, anyway? It's a badge of office to him. But what if someone needs something and he's not around? Well, they simply have to wait. As far as Hickey's concerned, the manager holds the combination to the safe, and that's it. Case closed. <laughs> it's likely to close his case, that's for sure. Hickey didn't do it. Now, what makes you say that? I was there, remember? He was as surprised as she was. Well, when you find something a bit more substantial, let me know. In the meantime, Mr. Hickey is our prime suspect. I wasn't entirely open with Sergeant Drake. The truth is, Hickey had seemed quite agitated. But agitated was one thing, and being a jewel thief was another. It just didn't sit right. Hickey had too much pride in running the hotel to allow for anything so messy. No, whatever was bothering him that morning wasn't in the safe. Good afternoon, switchboard. Afternoon, Mr. Lewis. Becker. I'd like to see the valuables register. Of course. Right over here. I'm calling for you now, sir. It's a terrible thing, isn't it? What? This jewel theft. Mr. Hickey suspected. Ridiculous, I think. Yeah, here you are. How exactly does this work? Very simply. 
One records the date, the name, and room number of the guest here. The description of the object which we're putting in the safe goes on the right here. Then the manager signs the book and issues a receipt. And this is the entry for Mrs. Armstrong? That's correct. Seems a bit sketchy. There's no description, no signature. Totally inadequate, I'm afraid. Because? Sometimes these things happen. What things? Well, as you can see, I was registering Mrs. Armstrong's valuables. The necklace? Well, I believe so. I didn't actually see the necklace. When Mr. Hickey came out and insisted on taking over. But he didn't complete the registration. No, he took Mrs. Armstrong into his office. He probably assumed that the registration had been completed. And you didn't think to point out that it hadn't? <laughs> Mr. Hickey doesn't like to have things pointed out to him. I think you know that, Mr. Becker. Does Mr. Hickey often invite guests into his office? Not that I've noticed. Is there anything else you noticed? Becker, I thought I heard you. Come in, will you? Uh, you right away, uh... Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Becker? Come in, come in, and close the door. I'm not sure I approve of you gossiping with Mr. Lewis, Becker. Just looking around. I think I'd rather you weren't looking around. There's really no need. Perhaps you don't understand. But I'm a suspect. I understand that very well. But I'm prepared to stand on my reputation. That may not be enough. This Mrs. Armstrong... Now, no, that's exactly my point. An investigation of the manager can only spawn gossip and rumors. I'm not going to repeat anything. You, you know, Becker, this hotel is my life. I'd resign before I harmed her in any way. Yes, I believe that. I give but you, you my word. If I knew anything about Mrs. Armstrong that had any bearing on the present situation, I would let you know. Mr. Hickey... But I do not. And that's it? That's it. Okay, if that's what you want. Tell me about the necklace. What did it look like? I don't know. What? I don't know. It was in a box. And you didn't ask to see it? Sometimes the guests must be respected, Becker. The guests must be respected. Sometimes I wanted to strangle that man. Mr. Hickey doesn't like to have things pointed out to him. As a result, no one actually saw Mrs. Armstrong's missing necklace... It was obviously time to talk with the lady herself. But that wasn't going to be so easy. Mrs. Armstrong informed me she had no interest in discussing the matter further, and necklace or not, she had much more enjoyable plans for the afternoon. So? I must admit I could think of better places for a private conversation than a Wednesday afternoon tea dance, but as Mr. Hickey had said, the guests must be respected. So, you're in logging, Mr. Schaefer. Mm hmm <laughs> I hope you're planning to leave us a few trees around the hotel. Oh, there's plenty to go around. And is it very profitable? Profitable? Ma'am, it's a gold mine. Oh, how exciting. May I come in? Mr. Becker. I'm not sure that the Oh, it's late... perfectly all right, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you. As you wish, ma'am. <laughs> Till later. Shall we? Of course. I apologize if I interrupted. You're a very persistent man, Mr. Becker. Yes, I am. Perhaps we should sit this one out, then. Please. Is this acceptable? Perfectly. Thank you. Let's start with the necklace. A diamond and ruby choker. Valued $40, at... $40,000, give or take. You're very calm about it. They're insured. No sentimental value? I'm a woman alone, Becker. I can't afford to be sentimental. I see. Do you have any idea who the thief might be? The police suspect Mr. Hickey. Do you? No. Why not? Mr. Hickey has always been most obliging. You've known Mr. Hickey for some time, then? Since I arrived. But it does appear that he's the only person who could have stolen your necklace unless... I don't suppose there's any possibility that it was not actually in the box. None. Because it turns out that no one except you actually saw it. Anyone could have looked at any time. Yes. I wonder why they didn't. Perhaps we should return to the floor, Becker. I think I prefer dancing with my feet. The next day, Mr. Hickey was in the quaint Victorian phrasing of the governors, sent home to await the outcome of the investigation. 
Over the weekend, a blanket of silence settled down on the hotel. For the guests, of course, it was business as usual. But on the back stairs, people talked in whispers or burst into surprising fits of laughter. No one knew what was going to happen next. But it wasn't long before I was to find out. Come in, Becker. I'd like you to meet Mr. Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins? Becker. I wondered if it would be you. You know each other? Know him? Becker here was the best damn mountain guide in the province. Well, this is going to be more enjoyable than I'd imagined. What is? Uh, Mr. Hawkins is with Continental Insurance. Uh, we're investigating the Armstrong claim. Hell, if I knew you were the man on the spot, I could have saved myself the trip. I don't know. I haven't got a whole lot to report. Then I'll fill you in on some of the insurance background, and we'll see where we go from there. Sounds good. Oh, it is. Four years ago, a diamond and ruby necklace disappeared from the Hotel McDonald. Uh, that's the McDonald in Ottawa. That necklace was never recovered, and the insured was very generously compensated. I assume you've guessed... Mrs. Armstrong. Precisely, Mrs. Armstrong. Now, another of her necklaces has disappeared, and it sounds like the same necklace to me. Well, as far as I know, nobody's actually laid eyes on it. Which suggests a connection between Mrs. Armstrong and Mr. Hickey. Oh, I haven't found anything... Keep looking. Work. You'll find it. It's got to be there somewhere. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Lewis, let's have a look in the safe. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible, sir. Mr. Hickey's the only person with the combination. What? Aren't there procedures? <sighs> Mr. Hickey ignores them. But you have asked for it back. I didn't feel I had the authority. Well, you're now the acting manager, Lewis. You have the authority, so get that combination back by tomorrow morning. <sighs> yes, sir. Very good. See you in the morning, Becker. Mr. Hawkins? <laughs> acting manager. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's not actually announced yet, but... Uh, now, this matter of the combination, would you see to that, Becker? Me? Well, you're the man on the spot. Besides, I think you'd agree that it could be a sensitive request coming from the new manager. Acting. <laughs> of course. Of course. Hotel switchboard? Yes, sir. It's a quarter of ten. Thank you, sir. Good night. Oh, Mr. Becker, what have you got there? The registers for the past two years. Looking for something particular? Someone, but I didn't find her. Mrs. Armstrong? Perhaps I should be talking to you. I was a bit surprised that you didn't. After all, I was sitting right here when that woman arrived. And? And Mr. Hickey knew her for the hussy she was the minute he saw her. Imagine dancing the afternoon after your jewels are stolen. Do you think he recognized her? Absolutely. He even warned Mr. Lewis. Warned? After she left. He warned him. Of course, it wasn't the best time. Mr. Lewis was in quite a temper. I never noticed that Mr. Lewis had a temper. Well, you've got to know how to recognize it. He gets all broody, quiet. Of course, it's worse since Mr. Hickey arrived. Mr. Lewis was here before Mr. Hickey? Lord, what you don't know? Of course he was. He was the acting manager, just like he is now. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> you mustn't make me laugh. <laughs> Good evening, hotel switchboard. I'm afraid the kitchen's closed, madam. Good night. Now, where were we? You were telling me how Mr. Lewis changed when Mr. Hickey arrived here. Do you happen to know where he came from? Oh, that's easy. The Hotel McDonald in Ottawa. Mr. Hickey was assistant manager at the Hotel McDonald. Any lawyer will tell you there's nothing worse than asking the wrong question and getting an answer you didn't bargain for. True, I'd found a link between Mr. Hickey and Mrs. Armstrong. Hawkins would be pleased. And Miss Watts had given me a hussy and a passed-over assistant manager to think about, which is considerably more than I'd had before. Yes, it's true. The McDonald lost a necklace of mine. It should have taught me, I suppose. And that necklace was... A diamond and ruby choker. Sounds like the same... It was identical. I had it copied. A copy? Not quite the same. I never found anything that looked as good on me. 
Could we finish this in the morning, Becker? Did you know that before he came here, Mr. Hickey was the assistant manager at the McDonald? Indeed. There's an insurance investigator who's going to find that pretty incriminating. I think you'll find that Mr. Hickey left the McDonald's some months before they lost my necklace. How'd you know that? Check it up if you like. Look, Mrs. Armstrong, if there's any suspicion, any suspicion at all, Hickey's finished. Do you know what that will mean to him? This hotel is his life. So? So, if you know something, now's the time to tell it. And I'm the person to tell it to. I just might be able to Are you really his friend, Becker? No, I can't say I'm his friend, Mrs. Armstrong, but I do believe he's innocent. I'm not sure that's enough. Mr. Hickey hired me for this job when I was so low, nobody in their right mind would have hired me as a hitching post. I owe him for that. And if it's possible, I'm going to repay him. A few years ago, when he was assistant manager at the McDonald and uh, somewhat younger, Mr. Hickey and I had a short intrigue. Quite sweet. Although it ended badly. Now he thinks I'm a loose woman. Which is why he invited you into his office that day. He was protecting his assistant manager, Lewis. He almost jumped out of his skin when he saw me at the desk. Sad, isn't it? It's very late, Mr. Becker. There's just a couple of things I'd like to check. Right, um, sit down, then. Whiskey? In the office? <laughs> it's one of the privileges of management. Does it make you uncomfortable? No, go ahead. So you enjoy being acting manager? Well, I haven't really had time to tell. But you've been acting manager before. For a short period. Hickey's a few years younger than you, isn't he? A few. Oh, it's always like that. You carry the can for them, and then they send out a kid from Ottawa to take over. Mr. Hickey's been an excellent manager. Until now, that is. You feel he's involved in this? Don't you? Well, it's certainly possible. It's also possible that someone might benefit from making it look that way. I hope you're not suggesting I had something to do with this. Well, sometimes you've got to try a few paths before you find the right one. Well, then I suggest you try another. Right. Oh, you're right. I hope you understand. I had to... No hard feelings? None. I appreciate your loyalty to Mr. Hickey. I hope you show the same loyalty when I'm the manager, which I suspect will be quite soon. Oh, I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. Why is that? Hickey will be back. Unless they find the jewels in his pocket, that is. He's got a lot of influence. Hmm, I don't know. How do you think he got the job in the first place? There's something about a man who offers a whiskey to an ex-drunk. Something a bit sadistic. You don't want to trust him, and you know you're not going to enjoy working for him. He was a cool customer, though, Lewis. And if he had a temper, he was keeping it well under wraps. But temper's one thing, and ambition's another. I was betting he didn't have the same control over that. It's 11.30, Becker. You were asleep? Uh, No. I won't stay long. I suppose you've got more questions. I've actually come for the combination to the safe. Ah, ah, the final blow. Lewis thinks I'm hiding something, does he? It's not Lewis, it's Sam Hawkins. Hawkins? Oh, I'm impressed. No, honored. I, I, oh, what am I going to do, Becker? Hawkins is just being thorough. Yes, 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 of course. And Lewis? Well, you know Lewis better than I do. He's an envious little man, Becker. I've never trusted him. It occurred to me that... But he couldn't. Could he? Oh, excuse me. I'll write out the combination for you. I'd like you to write it out twice, Becker. On two separate sheets of paper? You don't need to show me, but there's a trick. What are you up to, Becker? We're going to tie a fly. And the trick? The trick to tying a fly is to make it look so real that the fish doesn't notice the one wrong detail. Which is... The hook, Mr. Hickey. The hook. Admirably on time, Becker. I'm impressed. New days, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Hawkins. And you have the combination? Signed, sealed, and delivered. Thank you. 
Take your time, Mr. Lewis. This is a solemn moment. Oh, oh, excuse me. I, I should have knocked. Mr. Hickey, good morning. We were... At... About to open the safe, yes. Well, uh, d- don't let me stop you. I've, I've just got a few things to pick up. Uh, uh, morning, Becker. Mr. Hickey? Uh, Mr. Hawkins, I, I thought we'd be seeing you. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure. It... Get on with it, Lewis. Well, there's no reason to be rude. Will you please open the safe, Mr. Lewis? Hmm? Right away. I... Left, right, on to left. That's it. Excellent. Well, ready for inspection, Mr. Hawkins. I'm returning the combination to you, Mr. Becker. You don't want it? Only if I were confirmed in my post. I'm sorry, Mr. Hickey. It's quite all right, Mr. Lewis. Eureka! One diamond and ruby choker. I've got you, Hickey. I knew I had the minute you walked through that door. You just couldn't stay away. I'm sorry, Mr. Hickey. What do you think, Becker? The perfect place to hide the goods. Right back where they came from. You've outsmarted yourself, Mr. Hickey. Well, if I had put them there, I would agree with you. What do you mean, if? You're the only one with a combination. Not quite. Yes, yes, I know you have it, Becker. The truth is, I don't have it. More games, Mr. Becker? What's this about? Did you know that Mr. Lewis was the acting manager before Mr. Hickey arrived? Imagine how he felt when he was replaced by... This is nonsense! But an obvious motive. With Mr. Hickey accused of theft... But Mr. Hickey was the only one with the combination. Exactly what I thought. Until it occurred to me that the man who was acting manager when Mr. Hickey arrived might also... Never! So, last night, I suggested to Mr. Lewis that it might be necessary to actually find the necklace in Mr. Hickey's possession. That is, if we really wanted to get rid of him for good. Later that night, when I went to pick up the combination from Mr. Hickey... He asked me to write it out with one number changed. Anyone who opened the safe from this paper, the paper I gave you, Mr. Lewis, had to know the combination already. Had to know it so well that he never really looked at the figures. That's ridiculous. It was a risk, I admit. Let me see that. Be my guest. Very nice, Becker. This isn't the combination. Exactly. But Mr. Hickey could still have placed the necklace in the safe. He was with me all night. I think you owe this man a debt of gratitude, Hickey. Yes, it's very satisfying when one's staff performs up to expectations. Now, as for you, Mr. Lewis... Don't say a word, Mr. Hickey. You've humiliated me for far too long. If there's one thing I do not regret, it's that I scared you silly. I wish I'd done more, but at least I shall never have to listen to another condescending syllable from you again. Just a few more, Mr. Lewis. Your services will no longer be required. Becca, I think you'd better call Sergeant Drake. But there is one thing I don't understand. What's that? I wrote out two copies of the combination, one of them correctly. Which I gave to Lewis. No, no, you gave him the one with the number changed. Oh, not at first. I couldn't count on him missing the mistake, so I actually gave him the correct combination. He opened the safe, he returned it. Then when he asked to see it again, I substituted the one you changed. He assumed, as anyone would, that he'd simply corrected the mistake without noticing. You cheated to prove my innocence. I never thought you were guilty. I'm touched. But I never thought you'd have a fling with a guest, either. I beg your pardon? That's the kind of thing that comes to the surface when we begin to spy on people. If you know what I mean. Whatever are you talking about, Becker? And that's as much of a thank you as I ever got from Mr. Hickey. By the next day, he was his usual self, and by the end of the week, I was beginning to agree with Lewis's assessment of his character. He was pompous, he was condescending, he was officious. So why do I continue working for him? I'm not sure. But I think of that moment sometimes, when he told me the hotel was his life and that he'd resign before he ever did anything to hurt her. I believe that's true. The Queen really is his life, and I respect that. It's important.
just heard Hotels Are My Life, Episode 4 of Becker, written by Martin Kinch. Andy Maton starred as Becker, with Stephen Hare as Hickey, and Daryl Shuttleworth as Drake. Donna Belleville played Mrs. Armstrong, and Bruce Parkhouse was Hawkins. You heard Wes Twitter as Lewis, and Marie Barron as Miss Watts. The music arranger was keyboardist Miles Jackson, with John Hyde on bass, Bob Day on trumpet, and Gary DeBook on drums. The recording engineer was Bob Doble, with sound effects by Utha Schaffland. The production assistant, Christine Story. Becker is produced and directed in Calgary by Martin Fishman. The executive producer in Toronto is Bill Howell. For The Mystery Project, I'm Bob Bovin.